Just in pure curiosity from my point of view, what was it like to be in Chicago in the late 40s, early 50s? Is that when I was there? Mm. Late 40s, I think, yeah. yes. I love Chicago. It was wonderful. Uh, but I do think I know what you mean. I, I, when I was taking my master's, I was with people who were very left-wing and re rebels, and they were quite wonderful, and a lot of them, like Harvey Corman was there when I was there, so that's your age group, and they had been in the army, and, and they were now back, and they were, didn't want to waste time, they wanted to get it done fast, and really work out and get, you know, they were doing Hamlet, and all the important stuff, and um, I think I'd lost on where I was. You're talking about Chicago, what was it like? Chicago, Chicago, what it was like. So that's what it was like. It was, it was Harvey and his friends, and it was cabaret during lunchtime, and it was very exciting. I came home and taught at the university here in the summer to make my money to go back. And when I got back, I went to the same cafe, and on the booth where we always sat, was a, a notice that says, report anything you hear that's subversive to the FBI and the phone number. I wondered why everybody was whisper, whispering to one another that had up till then been. Wow. So, that's so that was the contrast. You were there in McCarthy times. Yeah. Because my question is, about, uh, it, it, we're going to talk about Canada and we're going to talk about Quebec, but we're also going to talk about America because we live next to that culture and it influences us a lot. Oh, yeah. And you worked in America, you taught in America, and you learned in America, so I'm interested in... And I've done American films here. And you've done American films, of course, so it's like Finland living next to the Soviet Union for me. It's <laughs> like, how do we live with this big, large, powerful culture that is so overwhelming? And did you feel the difference between being a young woman from Vancouver and the big Chicago of Al Capone? And, uh, and uh, you know, no, Chicago's I was... a very exuberant city. Yeah, but we weren't, you know what it's like at a theatre school, you start at nine o'clock in the morning and you go to midnight every day. You don't really experience the city living that much. And the people who were in my class were from all over the States. Uh, so, I, I don't know, I, it, we could have been anywhere. You'd go to theatre school and you can, you can be anywhere. And were you tempted to stay and work in the States at all? No. Why not? There were things to do here. And, and Dorothy Somerset offered me a children's theatre space at UBC. It was practical. Um, uh, I met Jack there. I didn't meet him here. He was studying at Northwestern because he wanted to be a CBC producer in television. And uh, he was coming back and he was part of the starting of the children's theater too. Uh, but Joy, honestly, yes, so here you are, 1949, 1950, you're in Chicago. Yeah. There's a large theater scene there. Down the road is New York, even bigger. And on the West Coast, there is, you know, a dream factory of immense proportion. Back in Vancouver, there's almost no theater. Yeah. Uh, there's a culture that doesn't really want theater. Why didn't you say, well, I will go to Hollywood, I will go to New York, I will do... Uh, I belong to a group of people that year, just that one year we're talking about, which would be my, when I was getting my master's second year. Then I came home, did every man theater, then I went back down and taught in the same place. I guess between the time I was a student, when I was a student there, everybody was saying no to New York and no to Hollywood. They were going to go into the, the I was going to say the provinces, they were going to go into the states, they were going to go into the, the towns, and they were going to create theater for the people all through the United States. And then, don't let me forget her name, Circle in the Square, Tennessee Williams, um, ja an ex-student ex of Goodman, whose name is burned in my mind and I can't, I can't bring it out, um, was a hit overnight in a Tennessee Williams play. A, a star overnight. And suddenly everybody was going to New York again. And the ones that didn't go to New York went to Hollywood. And Joy? Came back to Vancouver.
I didn't like it. I didn't. I, I don't like New York. When I went to New York, I got the feeling it was wonderful to be with them, the people like people I love, like Theone Aldrich and Tom Aldrich, and very dear to me. And they were stars in New York. But you know, I got the feeling that when I went there, everybody met because they wanted to come and see me again, and they had a lovely time. But the rest of the time, I thought they were walking around a block in New York and they never saw one another. They were lonely. Uh, they were lonely at the top, you know, some of them. And the rest of them were poor and miserable. They weren't getting the jobs. I mean, you have to work at acting to be an actor. And, you know, here at least, if there isn't work, you can create it for everybody else, if not for yourself. But even for yourself, you, you can create it. There you can't, it's a big machine and it's... You know, it's... This is uncanny. No, it's... You are telling me the inside of my head in 1975 in New York. Those were my thoughts oh. in 1975 in New York. I thought, I don't see the community. At home, there's a community. Here I see people. I didn't you have the image walking yeah. around the block. But, you know, I saw a lot of friends starving and some friends being, being stars. But I yeah. thought, I can't. For almost identical yeah. reasons. Yeah. I didn't want that. I didn't, I didn't think that was what it was about. I didn't think that competitive in the, you know, in the hands of producers, your life on the, on the flip of a coin in one night, three nights, one week, and your whole life poured into that. That's not what the theater is about. But the power that comes with stardom, the power of that one woman at Circle of Swear to move people, you know, here we come back to our small Canadian theaters and with our nice Canadian audiences and they're, well, yeah. look at the CBC numbers and they're not very big. There, you have a movie, suddenly you'll have 45 million people seeing it. Isn't that a power or an opportunity that at all appealed to you? No. United Church Minister, Father, um, London nurse, evacuee here from the war, because I came out in the second year of the war. Um, no, no, do it here, you know, it, we're, see, the, the Americans are, what, 600 years behind Shakespeare? I can't remember what 100 years are, but their theater will never catch up. Their theater, once they start doing their own stuff, will catch up. That's not Broadway, that's right. other places. Here, we're 200 years behind them. So we're doing very well. And when you mean 200 years, what exactly do you mean? When, when you we started right. doing for the profession. You see, I found out, I, I did a speech um, here at PAL. They were thanking people. I had to do the thank you speech to a woman who was the first Giselle, in 1948. She danced it in Montreal. She worked on it with a choreographer, not one of our famous choreographers, with a choreographer, a teacher she knew there for six months. She danced it once. And she's one of the most... Then she went to Winnipeg. She became a dancer and she was in Winnipeg. But she's here now. She's my age. And she started in 48, and she got a glimmer of something doing Giselle that first time that she then wanted, not just for herself, but for all dancers and companies. And here she's been, she started every company here. And in studying to say thank you to her for her lifetime, I thought, 48 to through 2010, well, no, no, no. 48 to 67 was when it all happened. You were there. 48 to 67, we decided to be professionals. We decided we didn't want to be uh, in the, the amateur company anymore or uh, just go and see people from England who were going to show us how to do it thrillingly, thrillingly. Uh, it all happened in actually from the day she did that, 48 
and what was happening then to 67 when the Trudeau government looked around for the opening of the National Arts Centre and said, where are the new plays? Where are the new operas? Where are the new ballets? And there weren't any, so they had started handing out $1,000 subsidies. And that was enough for Malcolm Black here at the Playhouse to be able to go to his board and say, I'm going to do five plays on the main stage in 66, and we get $1,000 each from the government for doing that. Well, they weren't going to say no. It was a lot more money then. And, and he was the first person to do the new plays. 66, 67 we did Rita Joe and Grass and Grass Strawberry. 67, there wasn't, a, there wasn't a company anywhere in Canada that I know of that was doing nothing but Canadian plays. Now in every city there's at least one company. So that's what I mean. That's when it began for us. So put that against your Eugene O'Neill um, and the Actors Theatre that uh, Odette's was part of. I think it's a hundred years difference, two hundred years difference. And so I think we're doing well.